Hello, my name is Brendan Barrow, and today I'll be presenting on understanding the chemical contribution to the enhancement in surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy, or SIRS, and the connection between these enhancements with Hammett parameters. When light interacts with a material, it can do so through scattering, which is the absorption and subsequent emission of a photon by the material. And this can happen inelastically, in which the emitted photon is at a different energy than the incident light. This is called Raman scattering and is due to interactions with the vibrational modes of the molecule. These vibrational modes create a much finer spectra that can allow us to identify single molecules, making it a very useful technique. However, the Raman spectra is at a low intensity and must be enhanced in order for it to be applicable. This can be done through the use of localized surface plasmons. These are collective oscillations of electrons in a noble metal cluster, specifically one that is smaller than the wavelength of incident light. And we can maximize this enhancement through certain resonance frequencies. When we bind the molecule we want to identify to one of these metal clusters, this is what creates surface enhanced Raman scattering. This has been achieved experimentally since the 1970s, but the theoretical picture is still an active area of research. This is because there are four distinct mechanisms that combine to create a total overall enhancement. The first is plasmon resonance, which I just mentioned. The second, which our work is concerning, is the chemical enhancement. This is not due to any particular resonance frequency, but is instead enhancement due to the changes in electron structure when the molecule binds to the metal. There is also charge transfer and molecular resonance mechanisms. These are due to certain resonance frequencies. In our work, we use a 19 atom silver cluster with a benzene thiol molecule. The reason why we use 19 atoms and remove this vertex atom here is because the overall structure is a closed shell system. We model this using the Amsterdam Density Functional Program Package, and our goal is to systematically vary chemical interactions through changing the variables in the system. The first is whether it's in vacuum or a solvent. Secondly, we remove one of the hydrogen atoms and replace it with a halide functional group. And we also change the position of that functional group, whether it's in the meta position seen here or the para position here. When calculating the enhancement factor, this is done by summing the Raman intensities for the metal molecule cluster and then dividing that by the sum of the Raman intensities for just the molecule creating a ratio of enhancement. Looking at the table of enhancement factors here, we can see that for para-substitutions, there's a consistent decrease down the group. And for meta-substitutions, there is no such trend, but we do point out that bromine has the highest enhancement factor for this substitution. We can also clearly see that between vacuum and solvent, the enhancement factor is much higher when the system is in the solvent. We want to compare this data to Hammett parameters. These are empirical constants that define the reactivity of a benzene ring with different substitutions. It is comprised of both an inductive and a mesomeric component. Induction is due to the Coulombic effect of drawing electrons, and mesomeric component is due to the spreading of electrons around a benzene ring due to pi bonds. Halides are unique because they have a combined effect of both induction and mesomerism. The induction is due to their high electronegativity that withdraws electrons, and the mesomeric component is due to the lone pairs spreading around the benzene ring. Looking at these graphs here, we can see that for meta-substitutions, there is a direct correlation between the enhancement factor and the Hammett constant. And for parasubstitutions, the effect switches and it is a decrease. But in both instances, there is a very strong correlation between these two properties. To conclude, we can see that solvent increases the enhancement factor and creates a stronger trend. We also see that for parasubstitutions, there is an ordered decrease down the group, and that trend is not seen for meta substitutions. 
analysis shows that there is a strong correlation between the enhancement factors and the Hammett parameters. This is being written up in a manuscript that is currently in preparation, where we discuss more the possible connections between the enhancement factors and the Hammett parameters, and would be worth taking a look when it gets published. I'd like to give a special thanks to Professor Dara Trevedi, my PI, and the Clarkson Physics Department, and also to Professor George Schatz at Northwestern University. I'd like to also thank Exceed for the computational resources and to Clarkson for giving me the opportunity to present this work. And I'd like to thank you all for listening and I look forward to your questions.